days, New Zealanders know enough about nuclear weapons to keep them far offshore. But we haven't always been so aware of the dangers or opposed to their use. In 1945, the United States dropped an atomic bomb on Hiroshima. New Zealand supported the military occupation of Japan after the war by supplying troops to a special contingent called J-Force. They brought home memories of a devastating bomb and some very surprising souvenirs. Well, these four lovely little pottery objects have actually come from Hiroshima, from Ground Zero, where the atomic bomb was dropped in August 1945. These two are money boxes, and you can see that little slot in the head where the money could go in, and they seem to have something still inside them, actually, which is interesting. Now, these two objects here are little raccoon dogs, or tanukis, and there is a folk belief that if you have the spirit of a raccoon dog, you'll want to drink alcohol. So you'll find that these are placed at the entrance to drinking establishments to encourage people in. And uh, who found them? Dr Guy Hallwright, who was a, um, a doctor in the medical corps with J-Force, which was New Zealand's contribution to the occupation of Japan. How far from the bomb were these found? Well, uh, Dr Hallwright found them within a couple of hundred metres of the epicentre of the bomb, which was the post office in Hiroshima. So when he had some leave from um, his duties, he went to Hiroshima as a tourist. And New Zealanders were allowed to do that. They were allowed to go and have a look and pick up souvenirs. Dr Hallwright found these totally intact objects, untouched, apart from this dog, who is quite black, so I think that might be evidence of the bomb blast. Wasn't he worried about radiation? Well, nobody really knew what uh, the effects of radiation poisoning were in 1946. People were pretty cavalier about it. Dr Hallwright himself had no worries at all. He was young, he was fit and healthy, he was only there for a couple of hours, picked up his objects and left. When the pottery was acquired in 2008, Stephanie and her colleagues were curious about whether the objects themselves were affected by radiation from the bomb. With the help of GNS Science, they decided to find out. They used a radiation detector to check for nuclear particles. But well, we found that these objects had no obvious increase in radiation levels. Mm -hmm. But um, when we compared them to the luminescent hands of an old clock, you know, the sort of hands that glow in the dark, they actually had a much higher reading. That was really surprising to us. We collected these objects because they represented to us the innocence that New Zealanders had in the 1940s and 50s when it came to nuclear weapons and testing. So the New Zealanders were very innocent in Japan. They picked these objects up as souvenirs, brought them back, and then in the 50s, New Zealanders went to observe British testing in the Pacific, um, nuclear testing. And it wasn't until the 60s that New Zealanders became really concerned about environmental and health impacts of nuclear testing and weapons and began to protest. And then you find um, that growing protest in the 70s and 80s leads to the government passing anti-nuclear or nuclear-free legislation in 1987, first Western country to become nuclear-free. You could say these ceramics mark the beginning in the development of New Zealand's nuclear stance, from innocence to protest. After quite a journey, we've now been nuclear-free for over 20 years.